my job uh, as the chief of staff of the White House, like any chief of staff, uh, and, and remember, in, in the military, chiefs of staff are all over the place, so to speak. I mean, at, at, in my own career, I had uh, I was essentially the chief of staff for the military chief of staff for uh, Leon Panetta and uh, Bob Gates, both great two great Americans, former secretaries of defense. Uh, I had in my career coming up. As a, general, as a senior officer, many, many chiefs of staff that worked for me and organized the staff and served me uh, and, and, and served the country. Um, so the, the role of a chief of staff is to organize the staff uh, in, to a point where the, uh, the recommendations that flow up, that go ultimately to the boss, in this case, uh, uh, general officers, uh, secretaries of defense, or for that matter, the president, that that information that comes up is, uh, is, is going to help him uh, be informed and be uh, ready to make a very, very uh, uh, informed decision. Um, so if you have a easygoing, um, uh, you know, principal, then that's, that's a fairly easy process. If you, if you have someone that's less easygoing, and, and, uh, then it's, you, you have a lot more hard work. If, if you know what I mean. So, uh, the working for uh, working for serving my country for 45 or so years in the Marine Corps and, and a couple of years in the civilian government, uh, it's what I do. It's what I've done my whole life, um, and uh, I did the best I could for the year and a half that I was uh, the chief of staff at the White House to to put order into the staff, and I think we accomplished that to get rid of some real bad actors who were simply in for themselves, not a lot, but we got rid of them. And I can say that when we went into, the, whether you like Mr. Trump or not, whether you agree with his uh, methods or not, whether you agree with his policies or not, I would tell you that when I was there uh, on every issue, he was informed. Uh, all of the pros and cons of where he wanted to go were, were on the table, and then he would make a decision. There's an art and a science to chief of staff. And if the first time you do it, you are if you're doing it right, if the first time you do it, you're doing it for the President of the United States, and he, and he happens to be Donald Trump, uh, that's not a good place to be because you don't know how to do it. Um, I believe, and again, I go back to a good Chief of Staff, uh, one of the key roles of a Chief of Staff is to tell the boss the truth and to bring people in that will tell the boss the truth, uh, even if he doesn't want to hear it. In the military, and again, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive a lot of people that don't really understand the military, we look for input from below that disagree with us. In fact, if you're a senior military officer and you find you have a sense that one of your people are a yes man, uh, you're probably going to move them on if you want the truth. Uh, I, many, many times my chiefs of staff would come in in the morning and say, you know, you know, boss, you have really a lot of good ideas. This isn't one of them. And then bring people in to kind of talk me out of doing whatever. So. Uh, there's no one there right now that knows how to be a chief of staff, has ever done chief of staff work. Uh, and I guess to answer your question somewhat, uh, it is tough to look the President of the United States in the, the eye and say, I think you're wrong. Let me bring in the, the kind of people um, that could uh, help you understand the, the, the issue in a broader way. Uh, they, they don't seem to be there anymore. Did you ever tell him that he was wrong? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I. It, it, again, a chief of staff, most of a chief of staff's work is done behind closed doors. And um, when he would say, okay, I want to do this, whatever this is, uh, the first thing, of course, is to check to see if he has the authority. Our, our government is nicely broken up in you know, the separation of powers and all. So most of the time when the president wants to do something, uh, any president, he has to go to Congress to either get a law changed or there's a few procedures of getting permission to, say, move money around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would frequently disagree with him, uh, but that doesn't mean, you know, I was wrong. He was wrong. It's just I disagreed that he was going in a direction that I thought would be completely productive. But again, chief of staff, uh, give my give my opinion, and then more importantly, bring in people that are, are really smart on the topic, whether it's the environment, whether it's economics, whether it's tra taxes, uh, geopolitical issues. There are brilliant people, and the Congress. Uh, I'm a big believer, I have always been, you bring the Congress in to have that discussion um, and uh, listen to them, both pros and cons on any issue. Uh, you have to involve the Congress, in my belief. Even if you don't have to, you should, because in my belief, uh, the Congress represents the people of the United States. If you get them on your side, or at least bring them into the discussion, 
you're going to have a lot less criticism than if you completely exclude them.